Good afternoon. Welcome to the Together We Will Heal Forum. We're so glad that you can join us today. This is going to be a fabulous event. This is going to be a fabulous conversation. Again, welcome to the Together We Will Heal Forum, which is organized by the Central Texas African American Family Support Conference. And the conference vision is to educate the African American community on mental health, substance use disorder, and intellectual and developmental disabilities, as well as a total well being of the African American community. We hope that this forum will provide the opportunity for you to participate in conversations that offer education, encouragement, and also resources. There's gonna be a few housekeeping rules because we want everybody to be involved and, and to, uh, to be engaged in this conversation. So at this time, if everybody can just please mute yourself, there will be a time for interaction to raise your virtual hands and then to unmute yourself if you have a, a questions. One of the things we wanna make sure though, that if you are having emotional or overwhelmed by any part of this conversation, please turn off your uh, video so you can handle your emotions privately. Note that this session is recorded and it is streaming live on Facebook. So if you're live and you can see yourself, just please smile to the group and to smile to the, to the audience. Today's conversation is on faith and mental health. Wow, powerful conversation. My name is Minister Sonia Hosey and I'm the founder of She Speaks Wellness. Joining me this afternoon is Minister Aisha Williams. She is the owner of Rima Salon and Spa and has been licensed cosmetology for over 24 years. She supports her cosmetology community as a member of the Austin Beauty and Barbershop Association. Faith is the foundations of Aisha's life. She shares as faith to support others in the chaplain of the Texas State Association and Beauty Culturist uh, League and an associate minister at the uh, Corinth Missionary Baptist Church here in Austin. Her commitment of using her pain as her purpose. Oh Lord, her pain as her purpose can be seen in her work at the health advocate or as a health advocate, life coach and mentor, you healthy for you. She's also a volunteer at the NAMI Central Texas. NAMI stands for the National Alliance of Mental Illness. She is also a Hall Foundation Advisory Board member, Sharing Hope presenter, Bridges of Hope facilitator, family support group facilitator, and the leader of the BIPOC community volunteer group. Then we have Joseph Reese. He is the Reverend at God's Way Christian Baptist Church in Taylor. Serving people is his passion. He serves his church and community in any way he can. And mental health awareness is a huge part of his, of his life because of his live experiences. So welcome everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. This is going to be just an open, casual conversation. I want each of you just to feel very comfortable because we're all ministers here and we're here just to talk a little bit about our faith and about mental health. So feel very comfortable because this is a conversation that we must talk about. So again, I thank you, Aisha, and I thank you, Joseph. So when we talk about mental health and faith, what does your faith says about mental health? Again, as in regards to mental health and faith, what does our faith says about mental health? Aisha, would you like to go ahead and, and um, kind of talk a little bit about that? Yes, and I want to thank you guys for inviting me and also allowing God to use me today. Um, what I what I know of <laughs> is that God is concerned about our mental. He's concerned about our mind because that's what draws us to him is making a decision. And it's all about our mindset. So I know that is the top priority of God is to be able to um, allow us to make choices because 
our desire is to become more like him and to become more like him, we have to make some changes. Mm -hmm. So our mind is essential when it comes down to our faith and actually uh, making adjustments. So when we have issues dealing with mental health, mental wellness, mental illness, it is one of the top concerns of God. Amen. And so, uh, Joseph, would you like to go ahead and make a comment there? Again, what does our faith say about mental health? What, what is our faith saying about mental health? That there truly is a God that is also concerned about his people. Uh, always concerned about his people. And as she already stated, our mental health is very important to God. And it should be important to us as well and to others. Um, it, oh my God. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's a real thing. Um, uh, for me, it, it's, it's a real thing because and probably for most people, it's been a minister. A lot of people would like to think that we have it all together. Well, or they put on a persona that we have it all together. And uh, we really don't. And it's a lot of us that suffer in silence. But I think with having the, this open forum, uh, I hope it will open more people up to just being open about where they really are. And uh, I think God appreciates that more than anything. Uh, us just being honest with one another where we are. So, uh, and faith is a big part of that, big part of that for sure. And one of the things that you all said that was so crucial is that we on the pulpit in ministry have to be very transparent about our lives. Amen. That just because we're on the pulpit does not, does not mean that we are not, uh, have gone through pain of some type. Yeah. Right. Uh, but we know where to get the support and the resources. One is from God, but then Amen. others are practical type things. And yes. so when we talk about this, why do you think it is so important for the faith community to talk about this? Why do you think it's so important? Let's, let's have a dialogue about that because we're still talking about right now, people are still talking about that no people want to still live in shame. They still want to wear the mask. They still don't want to expose. And there is a fear if they expose and be transparent, then there will be true judgment and stigma. Why right now do we need to continue to enforce and to be uh, transparent about mental health? Why is it so important right now? It's far too many people hurt. <laughs> uh, far too many people suffering in silence far too many people really just taking their own lives because they feel like there's no answer there's nobody there and i just think it's vital especially for the black community because one we grew up like whatever happens in this house stays in this house type thing or that's just him being crazy no 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 no, that day is dead. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It, it's just time for people just to be more open and be more real so we can save not only the Black community, but just save people in general. Right. Um, that's what God placed us here, to be an advocate for other people. That's why we're here. So it's right. just time to be serious about this thing because yeah, people dying on our watch and we think it's okay. And it's really mm. not. Lord, it's really yes. not. Mm. So. And then also, because we grew up in a culture, especially in our um, in our faith communities, that all we do is pray about it. So we don't think about what happens after the prayer. You, you know, what happens when the thoughts are racing? What happens in the midnight hour? What happens when you show out on your job? When you show out at school? You know, what happens? You know, why is this going on? We have to identify what's causing that to happen. And mental illness, just like anything else, just like diabetes, cancer, AIDS, anything, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a health condition. So in our faith communities, we have held on to, um, we just pray about it and watch God work, work it out. Well, I feel faith is action too. Mm -hmm. It's trusting and believing that God has created all things that work together for the good. Mm -hmm. So that means he's created the doctors, he's mm -hmm. created the therapists, Mm -hmm. He's created medicine mm -hmm. that's going to work for the good. Mm -hmm. And we just have to be real with that. And we can't stick in that mindset. All we got to do is just pray about it. Mm -hmm. I feel people mm -hmm. will be healed divinely, mm -hmm. you know, but I do feel mm -hmm. that this mental illness is a spiritual, it's a spiritual thing. 
-hmm. spiritual war. And mm -hmm. once we realize that we need to get actively moving and we need to be actively trained and we need to, to take a, a step after the prayer to make Amen. sure people will receive the healing that they need. And we get that in our mindsets because the stigmas are there, especially in our faith communities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're something. not strong enough or they don't believe enough. That's why that's happening. No, <laughs> mental illness is real. Amen. Mental disorders are real. Mm -hmm. Life is real. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's two things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's two things. Why do you think mental health has been demonized? Why do you believe that this mental health has been demonized? Look, I'm not trying to jump too fast. <laughs> No, 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 no. Because no, of because, the sickness because, that's been yeah. in, our, in our family and the traditions that we have, you know, they always feel like if something happened, it's because you're not doing right. Or, um, yeah. you know, we give too much, we give uh, the, all the credit to the devil, you know, like, oh, you're mm -hmm. letting the devil use you, you know? <laughs> so we do know that the devil does attack our minds. But also there's things that God allows to happen for us to move closer to him. So I do think the culture, culturally, you know, we know that there's been attack for years, especially in our African-American community for our men, our young boys, you know, mm. and um, yes. Yeah, so we always say we know it's an attack of the enemy mm -hmm. and we just want to deal with it just on the spiritual realm. But I feel like if you're praying on the spiritual side and then you're taking the action to get the help so you can walk through the recovery, it'll all work out, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She had mentioned men, Joseph. And this is um, this is this is just being real. This is being mm -hmm. real. Our black men, our black men, this is probably some of the, and we understand about racism. We understand about all of that. Our black men are at a place in a time in this season where this is really, even all through this pandemic, all the different things that have been going on. Tell me, Joseph, why? And let me stop saying joke. Well, no, I'm gonna call you Joseph. <laughs> uh, uh, Joseph, can you, can, you, can you tell me why is it so hard for men to come up and say that they are dealing with some issues. There's been trauma on top of trauma on top of trauma. And our black men are not opening their mouths to talk about their pain, their issues. Just from your experience, I know you can't speak for all black men. Yes, yes ma'am. Uh, for me personally, um, it was hard to really open up because uh, one, I feel like they wouldn't understand. Uh, and I don't really feel like I've trusted anyone enough with the information. Um, it's, it's one thing to say it and put it out there, but you always got in the back of your mind that, well, that person going to take it and tell somebody this, that, and the third. So you really don't want your business out there like that. Um, but I just think the persona of being a man, period, is, it's tough for anybody yes. uh, because you're supposed to be strong and handle problems and this and it's it just a lot that really doesn't make sense to me at the end of the day. Uh, but I personally think a part of being a man is just being real, <laughs> being real with yourself uh, and with anybody else. Uh, and it took a while for me to get to that point. But I tell you, when I finally, finally got to that point where I don't have to carry so much myself because there mm -hmm. actually is someone out there that really care and is concerned about your well-being. If you would just open up and trust maybe just one person, it don't have to be everybody, just one person, just trust one person with the information. Um, the process itself is, uh, is worth it. It's mm -hmm. worth it in the end. Mm -hmm. So if I could say anything to anybody, look, just find one person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to That's care. Um, we we here. <laughs> we are definitely yes. here. So. Yes, yes. Now we may have already kind of hit on this um, a little bit, 
but how do the church community handle mental health? Can we just reiterate that? Because we may have said something a little bit about that, but how do the church communities handle mental health? One, how have we handled it before? And, and are we seeing a change? Are we, are we seeing a change in our churches? What, what have we seen? Well, what I've um, seen is that a lot of times when you are dealing with mental illness, um, it's a touchy, sensitive um, situation, you know, and it's a, uh, and sometimes if you're not equipped to deal with it, you know, uh, you're scared. You know, a lot of times I, I feel like the church is scared. Like if I open this up, how mm. are we going to get to the point that we need to be? Because we don't know what to do with this. So mm. I think it's a lack of education in the church, you know, knowing where to go mm -hmm. because resources for mental illness are thin. It's not a lot. You know, we mm -hmm. have some in Travis County, um, mm -hmm. but we see our homeless people and we know that there's not enough resources, you know, that there's not, you know, so I think in our churches today, a lot of them are saying, hey, we need this, especially during the mm -hmm. pandemic, because you have uh, domestic violence is up, you have um, people committing suicide is up, you mm -hmm. know, uh, people realizing that they have mental issues because they've been isolated, they didn't know that before because they was able to go to work on a daily basis, they was able to go mm -hmm. to church, you know, when things change. So I think now the churches are realizing, hey, we need some help with this thing. Yeah. So I do think it was a fear there because um, they didn't know how to handle it or mm -hmm. how to speak about it or how to approach it. But I think now, since the pandemic, more people are saying, hey, let, let's talk about this. Let's mm -hmm. deal with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my view. And, and, yeah. And somebody just said, you know, there's definitely been some <clears throat> improvements. And that's a good thing. Uh, I've been seeing um, across uh, social media where now people are talking about mental health awareness. And at least that's a step. At right. least that's a step of bringing that information out about mental health awareness. So it appears that churches are trying to move forward. Uh, with getting the information out. And of course, through the, uh, our conversation, we will talk a little bit about more about how we can do that uh, to help our churches. But as you see, Joseph, how do you, from your viewpoint, how do you see the church community, community handling uh, mental health? Have you seen differences within maybe the last year, two years, what have you seen better, experiences? Yeah. They're getting better. Uh, I, I think the church is getting there. Uh, I, I still think the church is still a little afraid to be really hands-on. Uh, I don't. I don't think they want the responsibility. <laughs> you know, because it, it's already so a touchy subject. Uh, but I think they they get involved where they feel like they have the right information or how to help someone. Mm -hmm. uh, then I feel like now, I feel like if it's their own family member or something mm -hmm. that they more hands-on, but, uh, I, and, I, and I said this, I think about a week ago, I, I think it's the church's responsibility, but it's also the individual's responsibility. I, I really okay. feel that we need yes. to take some of the pressure off the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel like the church, maybe the church feel like it's already a lot that mm -hmm. they have to deal with, but I feel like as an individual, if you really concerned about your mental health, then it's time for you to take the lead the role on it. You can't wait for the church to mm -hmm. give you the answers. I mean, a prayer can only go so far. I mean, you have to do some work yourself. If you really, mm -hmm. really care, at some point, you got to stand up and be like, you know what? Whether I have the church or not, I feel this is important. This is what I need to do going forward. Where can I get the resources? Start mm -hmm. doing your own research. Do what you have to do. But no, the church is getting better. They're getting better. Yeah, yeah. But, and I'm and I'm glad you said that because uh, uh, sometimes we look at mental health when we hear the when we hear mental health, we are already putting up a certain stigma. But yeah. sometimes we have to look at why has my behavior changed? Yes. Why, why am I so stressed and it's been two or three weeks? 
Why is my body aching all the time? Why can I not go to sleep? And sometimes we don't understand that those things, those, those body indicators, certain things is going on in our lives can be a form of some type of mental health issue. So it's almost as though that um, when we hear mental health, it automatically puts up that wall and the barrier because mm -hmm. now people will say, well, no, I'm not having any mental health problems. I'm not having any mental health problems. However, if you begin to look at your mind, body and spirit, if there's something that's grieving in any one of those things, yeah. it can create <laughs> something more than what you had believed this was going to uh, create. But there's another question about what happens after prayer and fasting. A lot of times people will say, you know, I, I will pray about it, I will fast about it, uh, and everything will be well. Of course, we all know, we, we, we all know, like we've talked about, is prayer and fasting is, is crucial. It's, yes. it's necessary. Yes. But what happens, what happens after the prayer and fasting, and I'm still dealing with some issues, still dealing with some issues. So help us out, help, help us out. Let's have a dialogue about what happens after prayer and fasting, and I'm still having some issues. That goes back to me saying that um, the resources, you know, the resources that we need in our churches to actually give out, because it's not our pastor's responsibility to be able to counsel somebody through their mental illness. He's there to pray for them. That's one thing we have to understand. He's there to pray for them, because at the end of the day, we have a lot of leaders that have so much on them and they're going through it mentally, too. You know, their their mental health is important also, you know, so that's why I say it's important after the prayer that we connect ourselves to the resources to help people walk through that healing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have to be equipped. It's about being equipped, just like Jesus took the disciples and he trained them and he taught them. We need to be equipped. Mm -hmm. So, um what happens after the prayer, we're going to put some action with that. Right. And just like Pastor Reese said, it's, it's, it's a choice. Like right. we have to understand, even as leaders in our choice, we cannot want more for a person than they want for themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so are you going to use these resources? Because mm -hmm. you will find yourself overwhelmed trying to help somebody that don't even want the help. Right. That's right. Right. But I will feel good if that if someone came to me and I see that they're still struggling and I had the information to get them to the proper place. Mm -hmm. That would that would let me know I did my part. Mm -hmm. So what happens mm -hmm. after the prayer? We're gonna we're gonna pray, we're gonna fast, and we're gonna trust and we're gonna believe in God. But this is a card of hope. I'm giving you this crisis number. There you go. This is a God of hope. I'm giving you um, a link for a counselor. You know, I'm, I'm giving you hope. Mm -hmm. I'm placing hope in your hand. So that that's what should happen after prayer. That's just mm -hmm. my thought, y'all. Yes, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Would you like to add to that, Joseph? I agree. No. <laughs> yes. yes. And I thank you. I thank you so much. And I hope you all are okay with me starting by... Uh, by uh, saying your first names oh fine yeah i i hope you're fine with that because you know we just we're just here to talk you know we're, we're here talking um yes i liked when you said uh aisha about giving hope and and i just saw the imagery of you passing your hand one to the other whereas that i see it as a personal connection yes a personal connection this right here is hope this right here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I just got a revelation. Thank you, Lord, for yes. just giving us hope, transferring hope, transferring Amen. hope right there, transferring hope, transferring a recovery, transferring yes. possibilities. So it's almost as though that, and that's how we can touch and agree. Mm -hmm. hey, look, this number right here, this is a healing number. Yeah. This right, this just like living water. Okay. This, uh, this right here, this is hope. Yeah. This right here, this is going to change your life right here. 
And as we begin to change each other's life and get practical, I see, I yeah. think that's the piece. Mm -hmm. Religion, we can't put religion on everything. Mm -hmm. But you know what? But when you speak to someone in such a way that it is giving life, they hear the compassion. See, uh, they hear yeah. true compassion. Yes. That really, that we want people to be healed and delivered and set free. We say that a lot, but it's like, we want them. We want us. Let me just say it that way. We want us. We want our families. We want our, we want our communities to be healed. What does that healing look like to you? Because mm -hmm. the healing may look different to everybody. That's right. But still, to have that transference of the hope that, yes, our community can live again. Yes. See, I like this scripture where it's talking about Jesus speaking to the man that's asking him, do you want to become well? Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Do you Come want on to now. become made well? Yeah, 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 so yeah. now we got to ask our community, our families, our, do we want to become made well? Here's yeah. the number to 911 if you want to become made well. Here's yeah. the number to suicide hotline if you want to become made well. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to walk beside you. Matter of fact, I'm going to ask you, did you call the number? <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank yes, Lord. Jesus. I mean, I don't want to start a sermon, but thank you, Lord. Come on now. <laughs> that we can have these kind of conversations because this is a healing, right? I can feel healing right now in the name of Jesus. I can hear, Amen. I can sense the healing. Amen. And thank you, Lord, that this has allowed us the platform on the together we will heal this platform because it's talking about faith and mental health. Yes. So now we can bring Jesus to the platform. Thank you, Lord. Come on now. We can bring Jesus to the platform, mm -hmm. but then also given practical application. Sure. Now, what is the church leadership doing to improve the mental health of their congregation? But before you answer that question, I thank you all for explain or telling us and reminding us that our pastors don't have all the answers. Yes. They don't have all the answers. Also, they are working on their own mental health. Yes. That's right. They and when rest. we say the church, <laughs> when we say the church, we're talking about us. Yeah. The multitude is the church. Yes. It's not just the one, it's, it's the church. Yes. Us. <laughs> so what is the church leadership doing to improve the mental health of their congregations? What are the things that you all are aware of now? that uh, the leadership is doing? I love the Bridges to Hope with NAMI because I, um, I was able to be a part of two of them last year. And just to see the pastors and the leaders of the church on Bridges to Hope to get the information and kind of get the awareness of what mental illness is and seeing the difference and um, what a difference it'll make for your congregation. So I do believe that pastors are taking a step forward. I was like so amazed at Z, GMZ last year. He did a whole series on, on mental health and mental illness. Our, our pastor, Pastor Gary Renfro, did the same thing. I am so glad that our pastors are concerned and they're showing it. And I really love the fact that we have uh, pastors that are actually stepping out and saying, hey, I have my own struggles. Right. That's big right there. Mm -hmm. We see more leaders saying, hey, I'm struggling myself. And it's for us, the church, to understand that our leaders, our um, congregation, everybody needs rest. Mm -hmm. yes. It used to be so hard. When they came out with the words, I started hearing sabbatical. Everybody acting, oh, why they need a break? We paying <laughs> them, da, 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 da. You know, so now you understand that rest is essential. Even Jesus needed to rest. He needed to go in the garden and pray and be all by himself, you know? <laughs> so why can't we, why don't we expect that from our leaders, you know? Mm -hmm. So I do see our pastors, I do see our church really desiring it and taking steps by attending things to find out the resources. And I'm, I'm just going to tell you, with NAMI, we're going to bring it to you. If you can't come, we're going to show up at your front door. So, yes. And thank you so much for bringing up Bridges, uh, Bridges to Hope. Uh, and I want people on here just to write that down. There's a whole lot of nuggets 
that they're giving you of resources and information that would be valuable not only to yourself but also to your church community. Uh, so all of these different resources that they're talking about, go ahead and put those things down. Uh, get these young people's uh, names and numbers uh, so you can make contact because this is the time. If, if the information is there, now the next step is for us to kind of move forward. So thank you for sharing that information. Joseph, did you want to share anything um, about what the leadership is doing there at, uh, at Gosway? Uh, I think they've, they've really taken the active role of um, um, really taking in the information. Um, we have, you know, you to think. <laughs> you did bring it to Gosway. And uh, from there, um, I think God has done a wonderful job is instilling that leadership with the right information being able to have the workshops and to pass it on to others um i just <laughs> i just wish um and lord forgive me but <laughs> i just wish it could be just be more personal uh more personal um i, I see a lot of leaders just doing things just to be doing it um just to say they was a part of something um, but you, you, you have to be personal. Um, you gotta genuinely care uh, about a person, um, not to just get a piece of paper or say, I have the credential or I was a part of that. No, did you go to be a part of it to help somebody else? Yeah. And I think if we get that part down, uh, then yeah, we're all gonna heal. <laughs> we're all gonna heal. Cause like I said, people gotta feel they have to feel that compassion. They have to feel that connectivity. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're doing, they're doing great. They're doing all that they can. So mm -hmm. it'll get better. That's that's right. That's right. I, I'm glad that you I'm glad that you shared that. And Lady Jane, please make sure that you keep me on track because you got three pastors right here on this on this thing right here. So you know, a lot of times when you're sitting up here with ministers, we we kind of long winded. So just keep us, <laughs> just keep keep us on track. Keep us keep us on on track on track. <laughs> um, um, how are church leaders responding to the need to provide mental health services to the congregation? We kind of hit on that a little bit, but uh, how are they responding to? providing the mental health services to the congregation. You had already talked about GMZ, uh, uh, Aisha, uh, but can you kind of reiterate a little bit more about how are they responding to the need to provide mental health services? I think it's been a, it's a, been a great response. Um, I know that pastors are wanting to know how to start the conversation because it's so touchy. Mental illness is really touchy when somebody is opening up where they're weak, very weak at sometimes it, it's very touchy. So the response has been great. And I see somebody as a NAMI person on here because they mentioned sharing the hope, you know, just um, and that's where you can play a video in your church. And it starts the conversation. And we have this conversation that will start another conversation. So mm -hmm. I think the response has been great. And um, pastors are so ready because that gives them relief. Exactly. That gives them the relief that they need to, exactly. to know that because they, they're concerned about our souls. You know, they're watching over our souls, you know. So they, they are like, yes, thank you for the relief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as these walls are coming down and they're seeing the resources and they're reaching for the resources, we just connecting them all the way around. So I think it's been a great response from great. our leadership. Great, great, great. And we must, we must give those that are in leadership, and I, and I believe both of these uh, presenters basically said that, that we must give uh, honor to those in leadership who understands and who have a desire, even if they can say, I don't know, but I'm gonna learn, mm -hmm. I'm gonna reach out. I'm gonna try to get as much information as I possibly can to God be the glory because we're still learning. We, we are life learners. We will continue to learn, but at least it put down the wall to say, you know what, I don't know, but I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna yeah. find somebody yeah. that can give me the information. 
And even with that, that in itself is a true blessing. Yes. Someone had said, um, and thank you for this comment. It says, as a culture and as a black people, we have to get past the stigma that is rooted in the conversation surrounding mental health while we address the root cause, which is the most time rooted in some type of trauma. Yes. I believe yes. that trauma, there, there's a whole lot of discussion that we need to have on trauma, generational trauma. That may be a whole nother discussion, but <laughs> generational trauma, that's a topic that we as a church really need to talk about. Um, that's, that's a huge uh, issue. The other is, is that I believe the churches are creating space in generating more conversation about mental health more today than before. Yes, I truly agree. And I believe our presenters have already talked a little bit about opening the, the space, making feel pe uh, people feel comfortable about having the, co the conversation and being compassionate about it, being compassionate about where people are. That's what opens up the conversation. When earlier you were saying, Joseph, as finding that one person, even if it's just finding one person that you can speak to about the issues that you're having, somebody just wanna know, is there one person that can hear me crying out loud? Yes. My silent cry. Can you hear me? Can you hear me crying? The silent cry. Can somebody just hear me? And so that's where we in the body of Christ, thank you, Lord. We're coming to that place, Aisha. We're finally coming to this place. And now where we're having these kind of conversations, it begins to open up the eyes of our understanding. Amen. The eyes Amen. of our understanding. So now people are hungering for it because now they're seeing their mothers, their brothers, their yeah. sisters, their neighbor <laughs> dealing with it and they want to do something about it. Yeah. Right. We must right. do something about it. We must do something about it. Uh, the other is who takes care of the caretaker? <laughs> Woo. Go who ahead. takes care <laughs> of the caretaker? And that's where we have to take the pressure off the caretakers because we have to encourage them to know that they are essential and you cannot take care of anyone unless you take care of yourself. I can't be productive in this ministry that I say is mental health aware, um, mental health uh, wellness if I don't take care of myself. So it's like the, the, the support team, you know, like the caretakers of the church, not even just dealing with mental illness, the one who has a sick child or a sick husband, you know, oftentimes they're looked over and, that, and we do that in the church. We look over them a little bit because we're concerned about the person who actually has the sickness. But at the end of the day, they end up being sick themselves because they haven't taken care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to form that, you know, that support system. That's why I like, and y'all think I may be doing these NAMI, <laughs> these NAMI plugs. We have family support. Facili I do family support groups. So with those family support groups, those are for the caretakers only, not the people going through it, but the caretakers, you know? So we have to connect with those resources too. So the caretakers can be taken care of. They need their own support system. They need their own teams of support. They need their own peers that will check on them and check in. And people, and it makes you feel good when you have people that are like-minded or going through things like you to support you. Because when you say, I know how you feel, it really makes a big difference. You really know how I feel, you know, because we've been through some of the similar things. So I do feel like the caretakers, we need more support. And also we need more groups where we support each other. So. Amen. Amen. We're now going to open up the floor for any type of questions. And you can raise your virtual hands and open up your mic. Let me see if I can see.
Are there any questions? Let me go to the, if I can't see any questions, let me see uh, some of the comments. Uh, someone did share um, in here uh, that at Mount Zion under Pastor Horton, the health ministry includes mental health topics, trainings, resources for our congregation. We are part of AMAN, which is the African American Mental Health and Wellness Program in collaboration with UT School of Nursing, the Vision of Diversity and uh, Community Engagement in Mount Zion. Uh, okay, and they said they're very proud of, of their work. Yes, we're contacting, uh, my um, ministry is making contact to the AMAN uh, program. And I'm thank you so uh, for sharing that. Let's see what other comments are here. Oh, Asia said it would be well if we educate from the pulpit to the congregation. As I have heard many of my leadership friends say in ministry, they were not equipped to deal with mental health issues. And then on another note, congregants in the community has to realize that ministry leaders are human and they are exempt. Mental illness does not discriminate. Wow. And that is why we need to get the word, the, uh, the word out about NAMI programs should, uh, such as Sharing Hope, Bridges of Hope, and Bridges to Hope, et cetera. And can I um, touch on that? Because yes. um, one thing that will keep people from like jumping in and helping with mental illness, because they're not a therapist and nobody expects you to be, because with me, I am not a therapist. When you talk to me, you may think, oh, maybe she a therapist. No, I am not. But what I will do is pass you some information how to reach a therapist. Mm -hmm. So that's all with being equipped. Like even with our leaders, I don't expect my pastor to have to be able to be my therapist or know what medication I should take or do that. But we just have to have the resources. So I want to just put that little nugget in there. Um, and then also everybody expects it. It has to be a minister. It has to be a preacher. Find that person where God has called them to work mm -hmm. in that area in your church. Mm -hmm. sure. They good. don't, it could be the usher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it could, it could be the greeter. It could be the man that works in the financial department. Uh, it could be a deacon. Mm -hmm. We got to quit putting all the expectations on the pastors and the preachers. We work in the areas that we called in. Mm -hmm. It's some areas that I'm not called to. If you say, oh, domestic violence, I'm not called in right. domestic violence, but I will lead you to the person that may can minister to you in that, you know? So it's finding those people in our faith communities that are equipped and that are called in that area. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want to uh, say, oh, I'm, I'm for the homeless over the homeless such and such, such and I'm not called right. and I don't know how to be compassionate in that manner and you know I don't right. use the right words so it's actually being called to that right and we got to get it get out of the titles it's yeah, God where, yeah. did, where where's the work what exactly work do you have for me what is exactly. my purpose so mm -hmm. I think once we start identifying that we'll we'll be good we'll be good and we'll be able to aid uh our pastors and leaders amen Amen. 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 I'm going to read off something that someone said. And, and if, uh, if you all would like to comment on that, please do. Um, this person said, I was told in the beginning of my diagnosis of bipolar disorder by people in my church family that I wasn't praying and reading my Bible enough. That's why I was suicidal and kept having to go to the, into the hospital. If my husband and I continued to listen to them, I would have been dead today. Now they've allowed me and others to educate them on mental health symptoms. And that is just like diabetes and taking the meds. It's just for a different part of the body, which is the brain. 
And it's okay to tell someone that it's for you and to get professional help. Thank you so much for making that comment. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Any any comment after Amen. that? Uh, after that, thank you for sharing that. Those are the stigmas that we, that's why we're here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Those it's stigmas, tough. you know, to correct people <laughs> and to understand this thing called life is real. And, yeah. and when our minds and and um, when we have these mental disorders, they're real. And it's not just because you did such and such or you didn't do this enough. They're real. That's why we're here. And that's why we're talking today. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you took back your power yeah. and you did not allow that to kill you or steal exactly. your joy. Yes. But you're walking yeah. in your purpose to educate. So what that did was yes. it was a setup for God's glory. Yes. And see what the enemy meant yes. for God to speak death into you and to take your hope from you. God turned that thing around and said, you know what? I'm going to go back and use you to help educate them. Yes. So I thank God for that. That was good. And thank yes. you for sharing. That was powerful. Amen. Yes. yes. Very powerful. Very powerful. Um, there's another person that's saying uh, being vulnerable is and real is the key. And uh, oh, my goodness. Yes. Being vulnerable and real is the key. And sometimes transparency is powerful. Uh, very powerful. And I'm going to echo Aisha. Thank Always. you so much for sharing that because that's opening the doors. That's opening the doors. And when there is a, a place of transparency, we must understand that we haven't just helped one person. We've right. helped a hundred people. Now, can you imagine how many people is going to be listening to this replay and they're going to hear what you just said? Oh my, to God be the glory for what he's doing. Oh my, thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I do not see any additional um, comments. I do have here that, um, um, that another resource is mental health first aid training. Uh, they said it is very helpful. You can contact Integral Care uh, uh, Helpline. 512-472-4357. Uh, That's the uh, crisis helpline, but they also provide uh, mental health first aid. And NAMI Texas is also uh, a resource, as was stated before. Um, let's see. I want to make sure that we've kind of talked about all of the different things that have come up. But I thank all of you. I thank you for this conversation. This has been a powerful conversation that the conversation must continue to go on. We've done a lot in the body of Christ. We've done a lot in our churches. However, we must continue to do the work. As was stated, you do not need to be a minister. You do not need to be a, a, a pastor. You do not need to be any of those things. It's just somebody as a willing vessel that says, it's me that I'm going to spread the word. I'm, mm -hmm. It's going to be me. Uh, another person said that life works, provide counseling services, and that there are three sites here in the Austin, Austin area. So again, we're putting down a whole lot of resources for everyone. Please make sure that you put that information out there. Uh, look on your, and share this information to your community and to your uh, families and all of that. Another thing, as we're on social media, look at the information on social media that gives you specific resources that you can share with your community. This is valuable information. Let us not talk about it, but let us walk about it. Let us do what yes. God has called yes. for us to do. We got a whole lot of work to do. And, and the thing about it is he's going to work it through our hands. That's the blessing about it. He's going to work it through our hands, through our voices, by whatever means as possible. Now, let me see about the time. Let me see. Let me see where we're at. Let me see where, where we're at. Any, any other questions or anything? Can I say something real quick? I just oh, please I don't want do. to <laughs> Oh, you're okay. 
<laughs> um, I want to say to anybody that might be listening, anyone just on the fence um, about their mental health and where they are, um, for one, you can't be afraid to come forward. Um, it's not an option. Uh, I'm going to just yeah. say that. It is definitely not an option. And suffering and silence is not an option. Right. There's plenty of resources and there's plenty of people that's out there that really care about you, uh, even if you feel like they don't care. But what I want to say is this. When you come with, forth with your mental health, don't come looking for a cure. <laughs> it's, it's not an overnight cure. Mm -hmm. This is a lifelong journey. And you have to be okay with that journey and okay with that process. But you know, we have people that are walking out, which just don't come looking for a cure. Don't come, we can't give you a pill and it's gonna all go away. That's not, that's not real life. That's not real life. Just have an open mind that, you know what? No matter what it costs me, my mental health is important and whatever it takes, I'm willing to do the process, do the work, just do the work. That's all I'm gonna say. I like that, Joseph, where you said, do the work, do the work, because no one can do the work for us right. at all. And so it is our responsibility to tell somebody, look, I need help. Hello, I'm over here. I'm drowning. Just get me where I need to get to. Carry me, find me, help me, help give me hope to me. <laughs> give me the resources, give me the information. And then now, as, as Reverend Joseph said, now I'm accountable. Once yes. you've given me the information, now yeah. I am accountable. Uh, Aisha, do you have any other things that you would also like to share? Um, I thank God for everyone that's on here. And I think we all have a purpose of being on here. I think it's divine that you're on here. And now that we've opened up this conversation and everything that's happened on today, let's get busy like let's let's make a change you know let's open up these resources and everybody's mind does matter and god is very concerned about our minds and we need to it starts with us to break these stigmas so all of this stuff that we've been taught and what happens at home stays at home or some must be wrong with them if they're going to a therapist. Yes, something is wrong. That's why I'm there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and also with our clergy, um, my mm. heart goes out to the our clergy. It's okay to say that you're not okay. Right. You're not in a good place. It's okay to say, I can't talk today. So I encourage us to actually get the help that we need. Mm -hmm. Because we're going to walk through this healing so other people can say, hey, I see what God is doing. That's what it's I know that he's real. It's too many ministers and pastors that are committing suicide. We're seeing those posts all the time. And we sit around and we don't give our pastors and our ministers, our clergy rest that they need. So if there's anyone on this line that is suffering in silence, I'd ask you to come out. Please. That's not where God wants you. He wants you to pick up your mat and walk. And it may be walking into a therapist's office. That may be walking into a doctor's office. That may be telling your brother, your sister, your cousin, I am not good today. Mm -hmm. Whatever that looks like. But I think it's time. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's time. Mm -hmm. I know it's time. Let me take that thing off. I know <laughs> it is time. It is Come time. And before, before we close, one of the things that as a moderator and as also as a minister, one of the things I just want to share with you that there's, I want to be uh, transparent about something as we're talking about mental health. This little person that you see right here in front of you, her name is Sonia Nett Adams Hosey had dealt with some mental health issues during a chronic time of my life on the pulpit. And at the moment, I'm gonna come. On the pulpit, having some serious issues, chronically medical health or medical issues, the worst time in my life, didn't know what was going on in my life. My body was off balance. 
my mind was off balance and I knew I needed help. I needed help for my social support. I needed help, first of all, let me say my spiritual help. I needed help from my social support. I needed help from my medical support and I needed help from my emotional support. So what does that mean? I had to go get counsel. I was at the worst part of my life because I didn't understand the name of my pain. And what I'm saying, the name of my pain, I'm saying the name of my condition. And I didn't know what to do about it. And I needed people around me to understand what I was going through. However, I did not make excuses, mm -hmm. but I sought the help because I did not want Sonia Annette Adams Hosey to stay where she was. Mm -hmm. I did not want Sonia Annette Hosey to stay where she was because at one point in time, the lady that you see and sitting right here in front of you had lost her identity. Mm -hmm. And it was because of the condition that I was going through. Now, somebody would say, oh, but, but you, there was, it didn't appear as though that you were going crazy. No, my body was messing up. My body, I was having a chronic disease. All of that, I was suffering. And I had to let people look, I'm suffering. I don't understand what's going on, I'm suffering. I don't know what's going on. I don't know this disease, but I do know I need some help. Yeah. Spiritual, medical, social, and emotional. I needed all of those things in order for me to get through. So acknowledging it, saying that you need the help, go get the help and being responsible for yourselves. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. So I thank everyone for coming here and spending this time with us. Uh, uh, the Together We Will Heal Forum is every third Wednesday of every month, the same time, the same place. This Together We Will Heal Forum is, is through the Central Texas African American Family Support Conference. It is a conference that is held every year. This is going to be the 23rd year of the conference. We are seeking planning committee members, planning committee members to continue the conversation such as we are doing today. We are seeking members. In order to learn more about the conference, go to ctaafsc.com. Um, C-T-A-A-L-S-C dot com. You will truly make a difference. This has been a powerful conference. This has been powerful forms. So please just put the word out that we're still continuing the conversation. So again, we thank you. Thank you so much. Also, visit our Facebook page. It's the still of uh, the same, uh, the ctaafsc.com. You still go to that conference page. You will continue to re receive updated information about what's going on in the community. Last but not least, I wanna thank Aisha and I wanna thank Joseph. Thank you for your transparency. Thank you for what you're doing in the body of Christ. Continue to spread the word can continue to do the work. And I know both of you will because this is your calling. So I thank you so much for being on this platform. I'm not saying it just to be saying it. I'm saying it because this is what we must do in the body of Christ. So I thank you so much. Thank you so much. And again, we thank everybody for coming on today and just have a blessed time, a blessed day. Take care of yourself. And uh, again, if you need help, if you need resources, just reach out and uh, there's information that's in the chat. So continue to take that information and share with the community. Take care of yourself. God bless. God bless. God bless. Thank you so much, everyone.